as Canada became industrialized in the late 19th century, the prevailing opinion was that First Nations culture was inferior and that these peoples were destined to die out. To prevent this, the officials in charge of Indian affairs encouraged or forced them to send their children to residential schools. The Indian Act, passed in 1876, put all First Nations under the control of a government department and outlawed traditional practices. Denied full citizenship, the First Nations were in fact wards of the state. The hopes of government officials and others that they would assimilate into the mainstream culture were not realized. Their culture proved stronger than most people predicted, and much of it survived. In the past 30 years, the attempt to assimilate First Nations has been abandoned. Their rich culture, particularly their art, has been recognized and appreciated. One thing that has not been recognized is the First Nations' contributions to the World Wars. Veterans lost their status by choosing to defend their country and in doing so gave their rights to return to their reserves. Uh, this caused an influx of veterans and their families into urban areas, resulting in a need for social services and continued cultural contact. As William Morris has pointed out, the Indian Act perpetrated many discriminations against First Nations such as the denial of the right to vote until 1960 post-secondary education, outlawed cultural events, and loss of status in many forms. Systematic cultural genocide and policy of assimilation has been going on since first contact. How First Nations are viewed and how they are treated work in tandem. What comes to mind when you see and hear the word Indian? The myth of the Red Man runs deep in our psyche due to propaganda through history taught in school systems and images flashed across a silver screen of a continent that until discovered was inhabited by savages who were not even aware of the wheel. These images place indigenous cultures in the distant primitive past along with any art belonging to this membership which then becomes ethnographic preservation. The act of colonization is not defined in the 1997 edition of the Merriman-Webster Dictionary as anything other than to create a colony. This does not speak to the cultural genocide and generational trauma that takes place within the act of oppressing nations of people who have lived and breathed paradigms of civilization that include expression through song, dance, theater, myth, art, and language. It is the suppression of these very expressions and culture that has supported the suffering of generational trauma at the hands of cultural genocide. In actuality, these complex communities valued language, religions, arts, and sciences and were defined in large through visual expression. Every single one of these villages, towns, and cities had strong traditional art forms that spoke of the connection to the land and community. There are three main stereotypes in North American First Nations culture. Bloodthirsty savage, the mystic shaman, and the drunken Indian. All of these are grossly inaccurate and serve to perpetrate an otherness that further supports disconnect, reinforced by the hugely successful initiatives of residential school and the reserve system. of the Aboriginal population in North America today is under the age of 25. 40% of this number are under the age of 16. This speaks to children having children. Often these children are second and third generation in care with the system and can trace their lineage back to the residential school. A lot of our clients and community members are products of this social discrimination. The reality is, is that the doors of the VNFC are open to everyone regardless of color, creed, or religion. Our Aboriginal population is extremely diverse, with protocols ranging even within the nine bands on southern Vancouver Island. 
where community traditions vary even though the language group is the same. We need to be cognizant of this and trying to balance the needs of everyone can be overwhelming to say the least.